Here's a relatively interesting selection of similar tools. The four bill hooks in the center come from France. Various different styles. I'll have more information on them in the description. The one on the right is a very similar tool from Japan. The one on the left is a Fiskars interpretation which is used in uh, Canada and the US. And the one down the bottom is basically a very heavy machete pattern from cold steel which takes a lot more blade and a lot less handle but overall is a very similar sort of uh, intended tool. There's a number of very large and very significant differences in the way these tools are constructed which radically changes how they perform even though on first glance they look kind of similar um, and they are and they have very similar scopes of work but there are some relatively subtle and some relatively not so subtle differences in the way they handle and the performance and such things like the durability and cutting ability are radically different uh, among them. One of the standouts uh, that's immediately obvious even when you handle them is that the level of durability required, demanded, and implemented in the French bill hooks is absolutely insane compared to say for example the Japanese version. The French ones start off down by the base of the blade at over a half of an inch thick. The blade tapers throughout its length getting under an eighth of an inch thick through the tip. It's a full tang but peened to the bottom on all of the handles. All of the blades are subjected to extremely heavy use during their lifetime. You can see that the spine of this blade has actually been peened down flat. A piece of it was took out right here. And if you look at the edge, it's extremely ragged. Like this was used extremely heavily. And such is common throughout the lives of the bill hooks. You can see even here on the second one, again, the spine is all peened down flat. And it has a handle made out of suitable for Andre the Giant. It's absolutely massive. And just look at the amount of steel right here before it goes into the handle. Again, it's over half of an inch thick. But when you go up through the tip, it's tapered down to less than eight of an inch. Giving you very fine cutting ability up in this section because it's just so thin. But you retain the ability to do some very heavy chopping and splitting down here because you have a stronger wedge profile. These things are pretty much on the high side of indestructible. Because of the amount of steel in construction, the only thing that tends to happen to them over time is that you get splits in the handle which is relatively common because these things last so long. If you look at the blades just look at how much steel is in them. I mean generations of people could use and sharpen these and there would still be enough steel there. But you can see again if you take a look you can see a split in that handle right there and you can see a much larger split in the back sides. Now you also have integral ones like this which basically take uh, can go on poles or halves to make them even two-handed but they can be used around the integral socket handle with no problem whatsoever. You'll notice quite a bit of difference in the hook pattern like watch this one you can see which is almost like a 90 degree in comparison you can see how much more rounded this one is which compares very well to the Fiskars much more gentle. But now if you look at the Japanese version, see how it's almost much more perpendicular, which compares well with this style of the French one. So, and if you look at the bottom one, you can see it doesn't have very much of a pronounced tip whatsoever. Again, that could actually be worn off in sharpening. But again, many different styles. So it's going to be rather interesting to work with these bill hooks, compare them to the US version, compare them to the Japanese version, compare them to the traditional sort of heavy machete, and have a look, because uh, there's a very rich 
uh, differences among these and it should be some very interesting times working with these figure out how all the little differences uh, come into play and of course I gotta do a little bit of work before I start using them like I'm gonna put some expanding epoxy in here fill in that uh, all the blades need new bevels on them none of them are anyway sharp and some of the edges are uh, damaged but that's not gonna take very long to do because the steel is probably I would say um, spring tempered some probably somewhere around 45 I doubt it's any more than 50 Rockwell if it reaches that again because these were made to be extremely tough uh, agricultural tools but again really looking forward to uh, working with these really appreciate it from a uh, friend of mine in uh, France um, so fun times ahead